Hey there, welcome back. So in the last couple of videos, I've been talking about how to kind of simplify the way you use TickTick uh, because TickTick is a software that it offers a lot of different features and functionalities and that's kind of what it's known for is kind of all these different features and functionality and it, it does a good job at all of them, but the thing is, is that as a user, you might not need all those features and all that functionality. So there's another software that I've been using uh, for note taking that's pretty popular software called Obsidian. And it's along the same lines. It's a very powerful note taking app. You can add all sorts of themes and plugins and databases now into Obsidian. But the thing is, is do you really need that as a user? You know, maybe all you need is a solid, simple note-taking app. And Obsidian can be that. So in this video, I want to take you through how I would set up a new Obsidian Vault and make it simple and very easy to use. So let's jump in. All right, so I have Obsidian up on the screen now, and I'm just going to start by creating a new vault. So I'll hit the Create button and give this vault a name. And let's call this, and let's give it a cool name, huh? Maybe, um, uh, maybe something like uh, Stardust. You see my other vault names aren't so, uh, aren't so good. I've got Notes and Notes 2. So I'm going to give this one a little bit better name and create. All right, so I'm in my brand new Obsidian Vault and I've got the welcome note up on the screen, but I've also got a lot of other stuff going on on the screen already and I'm already feeling a little bit overwhelmed. So, especially on this right side, this is the graph view and it's funny to me that they show this right away when you create a new vault because it's like you have one note, welcome. And I know the internet is full of uh, pictures and screenshots of everyone's awesome graph views and things like that. But I mean, for me, honestly, I don't use graph view and I've never felt the need to use it. I don't even know if it's useful besides sharing your screenshots of it. Um, so that's one of the things that we're going to shut off uh, right away. So one of the first things I do is I go into settings, which is down here towards the bottom. And you know, there's two different types of plugins for Obsidian. There's the core plugins and then there's the community plugins. And basically the plugin is just additional functionality, right? And so there's the core plugins or the core additional functionality, which has gone through kind of a thorough screening and we know it's very legit. And then there's also community plugins, which are created by users. And again, additional functionality, but maybe hasn't gone through uh, that thorough of screening but usually you can count, I mean, from my experience, I haven't had any bad experiences with any plugins. I mean, some may work better than others, but I don't think, I haven't come across anything that's malicious or anything like that. So that's kind of what plugins are. Now by default, there are no community plugins enabled, but there are core plugins enabled. So meaning that there is additional functionality that has been turned on already. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on core plugins and you can see all this different functionality is turned on by default. Now, my recommendation, and this is just my opinion, uh, is that when I start a software, I like to take it down to the bare bones. So, especially something like Obsidian, I will come in and shut off all of these things, right? So backlinks, I'll shut off. Basis is brand new functionality, very powerful. And I'm gonna make another video uh, shortly about how I use Basis, but for now, I would shut it off, especially if I don't have a clue what it is, I'm a new user. Uh, all that's going to do is add to my confusion. And as I'm doing this, you'll notice that some of these um, navigation icons over here on the left side of the app are going away, which I like because that also adds to the overwhelm. It's like, what are all these icons? And you know, how do I figure out how to make it all work? Well, start by getting rid of them. You know, Start by getting down to just the bare app. What is the app about? So again, I'm gonna keep going through here disabling all of these canvas daily notes file recovery that all oh, that kind of sounds useful i mean that one makes sense to me maybe i'll leave that one on uh, files uh, graph view that's the one i just talked about uh, certainly don't need that one note composer 
outgoing links, outline, shut them all off, right? <laughs> I mean, this is just, this is how I go about things. So when I started using Obsidian, this is what I did is I came in and I shut it all off. And so now the only thing I have left on here is my file recovery, just because that seems like that might be something that I need uh, if something happens to my notes. Now, so if I exit out of settings, now look at this. Well, this looks a lot, um, well, it looks a lot simpler for one. I, I see the welcome, <laughs> does it look simpler? Maybe I shut off too much, right? Uh, so maybe you can get to a point where instead of making things simpler, you've almost made them more complicated by shutting everything off because now look at it. It's like, I don't even know how to create a new note now. You can see on this left side, uh, all the icons are gone. So there's nothing to click over here. And then also there were some uh, icons up here in the uh, top part and those are also gone. So all I have now is this welcome note and if I close that, what happens? Okay, so if I close that, now I'm on a new tab and it tells me I can click this link, it looks like, or press Control and N. So let's click this link and now I've got a new note. All right, so I'm gonna call this uh, new note. Taking a look at making Obsidian simple. All right, so if I close that, I should have two notes in the system now, but where are they, right? So I can create a new note, but I can't see where my notes are at. So what if I click go to file? Go to file doesn't work. I think that might be something I shut off. And let's see, recent files, also nothing. What about close? Close just opens up a new tab. So it looks like I need to go back in and at least turn on something so that I can see the files that I have in my vault. Here's something kind of funny. How do I even get back into settings, right? I must have shut everything off, uh, including the settings. Um, okay, so I found something. Uh, I do have a sidebar, although it was closed or collapsed. Uh, so if I click this icon up here in the upper left corner, uh, it does say collapse. This opens a sidebar. It tells me the sidebar is empty. Try dragging a tab here. Um, Hmm. Not exactly what I want. <laughs> so let's go back into settings anyways and at least turn on uh, files. So right here below file recovery is also files and the description of it says browse the files and folders in your vault. And so if I turn that on and exit back out of settings. Okay, now I have a files icon up here at the top and here's my list of notes. I have the welcome note and I also have my new note that I just made. So I did all that to kind of prove a point. It's like, take the app down to its very essentials and then figure out what do you need, right? So I figured out once I took the app down to its very essentials, well, I can't even see a list of my files and that's probably something that I do want. So let me figure out how to turn that on. And so now I have my list of files. Is there anything else that I, I would want? So that's kind of the question that I've been asking myself as I've been going through and setting up my new vault uh, that's going to hold most of my notes uh, for work and for personal. Uh, it's like, what is the actual functionality that I need? I don't want to just take what um, comes out of the box, especially when they have all this stuff that's turned on and I might not necessarily need that. Let me go ahead and shut all that off and then turn on just the things that I need. So one other thing that might pop up uh, fairly recent in your journey in creating a new vault and trying to figure out what is the exact functionality that you need in it is you might want to search, right? So like if I have my vault set up and now I want the capability to just search for a piece of text to see if I have a note on it, well, I don't have that functionality turned on in my system right now. So what I would do is I would go back to settings Go to the core plugins and see if there's anything that happens to be related to search. Now, if I scroll down, I will find that there is, in fact, a core plugin called search. And so I would turn that on if search is something that I want. And if I exit out of settings, now I can see that there's another piece of functionality. It's the search icon that I can click. And now I have the capability to search my notes. I can say, let's search for welcome. And now I have that 
capability. Now, if I wanted some functionality and I went through all the core plugins and that functionality doesn't exist as a core plugin, the next thing to do is to go to the community plugins. So to do that, uh, let me just go back to settings real quick. So I'm in core plugins. I'm going to move over to community plugins. One thing that you have to do in order to uh, look through the community plugins is you have to turn it on. So you have to click this button right here. It says turn on community plugins. And now you have the capability to browse community plugins. And so if I didn't find the search functionality within those core plugins, I now have another 2,604 plugins to also look through. And so it gives you a search uh, box up here that you can search for. So let me search for search. And I can see that there are other plugins out here. Again, these ones are created by the users and haven't gone through such a rigorous uh, screening process as the core plugins, but they might also be useful. But you may have to spend a little more time doing some trial and error and trying to figure uh, these ones out. But I do know that OmniSearch here is a powerful search tool that's used by a lot of different users. And again, it's a community plugin, but it kind of expands the search functionality. So if you read this real short description here, it says it's an intelligent search uh, for your notes, but also PDFs and OCR for images. So the core plugin for search kind of searches the text of your notes, which is useful. But if you want an even more powerful search, you have to come over here to the community plugins and you would install OmniSearch or one of these other plugins if it made more sense for your use. But that's my recommendation. Take the software down to its bare essentials, then try and figure out what exactly you need. I think it will help you learn the app, um, especially if it's a complicated app like Obsidian. And it will also keep your system running quickly uh, especially as you get more and more notes in Obsidian. You don't want to have extra plugins turned on that you don't necessarily need, so it keeps your system tidy. And then also keeps it uncluttered, right? So especially in a what can be a complicated and confusing app like Obsidian, it keeps it simple um, and, and less cluttered. Well, let me know in the comments. Do you use Obsidian? If so, what's your favorite plugin? Well, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.